Today, we are covering the Adelo Express kitchen display system. And if you think you know it, you might want, still want to stick around because we, we are going to show you some of the new things with it. There is a new setup and we are going to show the new setup. So this is a uh, not the same training that we've done before on this product. So it, it, is, it, is, it is a little bit different than what you've seen before. Let's start off with why you need a KDS or why does your customer need a KDS? Order accuracy is the number one, number five reason. And it is um, allows you to make corrections before the order is sent to, you can make corrections after the order has been sent to the kitchen. So they, if they miss the modifier or they go back and, and they need to change something, they can change it. And it does appear on the kitchen video as a changed order. Screens don't fade like paper does. So paper, it, uh, a lot of times people are putting thermal printers in the kitchen. Well, this screens don't fade like a thermal, thermal paper does with the heat. And also screens can be huge. You can get a much larger screen than an iPad. And, and we'll show today how to connect that and make that work for you. Number four is cost of ownership. This is a biggie. There's no more supplies to buy. There's no more paper or ribbons. There's no moving parts to break. Number three is it works in conjunction with printers. You don't have to have one or the other. You can have the kitchen video and printers work together, such as using an expediter printer to tray the food before it goes out to the table. So they actually have a, the ability to print that uh, order out so that they can take that then to the table and use it to uh, hand out the food. You can use a label printer, it's, for instance, in a coffee shop, if they want to have a kitchen video to get a head start on the order, you can still have a label printer to attach to the item as it goes out. Ease of install in that there's no Ethernet cables to run. This simply runs with the mobility of the Wi-Fi, and it just needs power. So a simple duplex plug anywhere can then run the iPad and the kitchen monitor, the bigger monitor. So you can just have a duplex outlet wherever that is. You can have both the iPad charging and the um, kitchen monitor. Use of larger monitor is simply, it just, it's just a better option. It, and we'll, again, going to show you how to make that happen. We'll show you how to, how to install that. Hanging monitors clears up counter space, whereas a printer has to sit on the counter. The monitor can be hung from the ceiling or attached to a pole. It's a much better, much cleaner install. And the number one reason that you need a kitchen video is it's speed of service. It's, this is actually the return on investment for this particular uh, feature. Order gets to the kitchen much faster in that it actually gets there 10 to 30 seconds faster because when you are using just a printer system, the order prints in the kitchen once the order is tendered, once it's paid for. In a kitchen video system, the order is sent to the kitchen when the subtotal is hit. So that means that that uh, tender, the time it takes to tender the order, pay for the order, run the card, those seconds are vital and, are, and the order's already in the kitchen. So it's actually getting a head start on being prepared. This makes it very common. You can get one to two orders per hour in an additional production. And what does that mean to a restaurant? Well, on a $10 average ticket with a 40% food cost, which is high, meaning they're probably gonna make more money than a 40% food cost. That's still a $6 profit for one item, for one order. Six dollars additional profit times two orders is forty-three hundred dollars a year in additional profit just for the simple fact that they have a kitchen video instead of a printer. So speed of service is huge, and it is a cost justifiable uh, feature. So let's take an overview of kitchen video. Uh, it can run on any of the iPads, Mini Air Pro, 
Only thing of requirement is we always say that it must be the current iOS. Now we do know that is our official statement, but we also do know that uh, older operating systems do run the point of sale. So um, let's, we're gonna stick to the official, which is the uh, iOS must be current, but you can run with a uh, other than new iPad if you wish. You can link to the monitor. It the, really the only requirement is that the iPad for the point of sale and the kitchen video have to reside on the same POS Wi Fi network. It's just considered another device. It does not um, slow down the point of sale. The point of sale is um, it's you can have dozens and dozens of point of sale devices in the system and not slow this down because the, all the heavy lifting and processing is done in the cloud. And I say that the cloud's not required in order to run the kitchen video. That's all on the internal network. So no need for an internet connection in order to run kitchen video. Unlike some of our competitors who do require a kitchen video to be run through the internet before it, it operates. We just don't do that. We all work off an internal system. There's a max of 20 kitchen videos that can be in the system. And that's in addition to 20 kitchen printers. So that gives you 40 devices in the kitchen, uh, more than enough to, to handle any kitchen operation. And of course, this does work with the Android, Mesa Plus and the delivery apps. So when we have an order coming through any of these other alternative processing uh, setups, they all flow through to the kitchen video. So it, it does work with Mesa and the, these uh, third party delivery apps. It's easy to set up. Uh, we do have a QR code that allows you to scan that from the point of sale, but there's also now a man manual way to activate the system and that you can use your, your login as you see on the right hand side there. You do get then enter the device number and that device number is popped up on the screen for you to then to touch. Now, Jeff and I were talking this morning about this very thing. We, uh, we recommend that you uh, put the point of sale in one group such as uh, Jeff likes his point of sale in the 100s, and then he'll put the kitchen displays in maybe the 300s. He puts, I think he said he put his uh, customer displays in the 200s. So that way that you have POS device 100 has then the customer display number 200 and the kitchen video 300. So that makes it an easier way to track the numbering scheme for your particular install. I do the same type thing, and I just determine uh, this, the, the, the number system based upon putting all the device, similar devices in the same group, whether it be 100, 200, 300, whatever that is, but just keep the, the similar devices in the same number uh, range. Then you pick the KDS number one through 20. And then um, you have to go to the back office. There, this is the functions to turn it on in the back office. You're going to go to settings, device config, then select the device as in the point of sale device. Uh, go to peripherals, which is a tab, and then KDS integrations. It's a section down below and then enable the KDS to display integrations is equals a yes. And at this point, it's, when it, you say yes, it's gonna pop up a bunch of uh, options for each of the uh, KDSs in your system. And you just need to set it and, and program there. You can program those and set up some, some of the features and functions there. But this is what you need to do in the back office in order to activate it there. Then come back to the point of sale. And in this case, you're going to connect the KDS to the point of sale device. And it's under the little uh, three button, I call it the hamburger button. It's the top left corner, there's three lines. 
touch that, go to hardware and go to the bottom where a kitchen printer or to the kitchen display. At that point, it's going to search the POS is going to search the network for the device, the kitchen display. And you just uh, simply hit uh, activate or yes to connect. For the kitchen display, you're going to enter your manager number. Now, this is the same manager number you have for the point of sale. Because it does download the database onto your kitchen display. So it does have the manager number that you entered there. You're going to enter uh, the same manager number on your kitchen display. Then you get to program it. And we'll go through this programming here in a, in a minute or two. But this is where you would then choose the type of display or the traditional or expediter. You're going to choose the, whether it's a, a one column, two column, three column, four column and two rows, one row, two rows, you'll, you'll pick the pick out the layout of it. And this is where you set that up. Multiple display formats, this is where you have your choices. You have uh, various text sizes and you can put the modifiers in color if you wish. Uh, item notes are also in color. You can have an alert timer. There's timer then will, uh, start to, to turn the order, will turn the order uh, red when you've exceeded the timer. Uh, the default timer is 300 seconds. And then you have the optional printers you can set up here for preview printer, pickup printer, label printers that go along with this monitor. So here are the display options. So you can do, this is a one row with two columns. So one row, two columns. Generally, maybe this would be for a lower volume operation that may have long orders. This would work well with that. Then there's three column by one row. There is a four column by one row. This means the, that you have four different orders, each one of them in a very long order scheme. This will allow you then to have a longer order in that one uh, for each, each individual order might be a little bit of a longer situation. Then there is a two by two, two columns, two rows. And we go to three columns by two rows. Just depends on what you want there. And then this is the one that has the largest number of orders on the screen at one time. It's four columns, two rows. Now you'll see, if you'll notice on the screen, I've taken the same set of orders and just used them over and over again and just redid the screen layout. So pick out the one that works best for that restaurant. The, even if you had the four by two, you still have the ability to have other additional orders off screen. So you can have uh, several orders in the queue waiting to come up to, the, be, to be in the top eight. So if you've got 20 orders, they're off screen but can be then viewed by just uh, swiping on the, on the monitor itself. This is a kind of an expediter, or I'm sorry, is a uh, production mode. This then allows the, or the person in the kitchen to focus just on their, their, their function and the, <laughs> their, their job duty. So if you put this over the grill, it's gonna show you how many patties to put down for the burgers. It's gonna show you how many steaks to put down. It's gonna show just the production for that particular monitor. So the, the fry person is only worried about fries and this is gonna show how many fries they need to put down. So in a high speed uh, kitchen, this type of display eliminates the clutter and it just shows the, the prep cook or the cook what they need to focus on and what they need to do as far as their station goes. You also have, this is where I'm showing you the red order, which is when the order has uh, exceeded the timer. It does display in red. So as far as easy setup, there's an order recall button as, a, as far as history goes. So once you bump the order off the screen, it is not deleted from the system. So if you need to recall that for whatever reason, you can go to the history button and bring the previous orders back up on the screen. 
And if you if you forgot uh, something, if you forgot to fix something, you can bring that back to live. The good thing is the timer still continues to run. Bumped orders or bumped items because you can bump just an item. And as you bump those individual items, they then go to the expediter uh, monitor. So they start showing up there for the expo person to then put those orders and tray them out. You can have alternative languages. Just like you have alternative languages in the for the kitchen printer, you can do the same thing for the kitchen video. And you get to choose the language, if you wish to, by monitor. So you can have Spanish on one, Chinese on another, English on another. You have the option to have multiple languages or alternative languages. These follow the uh, secondary language of the item. And I told you, you can set up a, and connect a monitor. Well, you need this cable. You're going to use a USB-C to HDMI cable. And I found it on Amazon. I found a three-foot cable for 18 bucks. You just plug one end, the USB, into the iPad and the other end into the monitor, and it will immediately display whatever's on the iPad will display on the monitor. If you wish to alter the aspect ratio, it will stretch the iPad image left to right. So it will stretch it out a little bit. If you don't change the aspect ratio, it'll have black bars or black sections on the side of the screen. Your choice, it's not hard to do. Just change the aspect ratio and it will stretch it out to, uh, to take up the whole entire screen. Can you use Apple AirPlay. Well, I got that question just recently. And the answer is, yeah, you can. You can use AirPlay, but it's going to take the right monitors. Probably going to take a television, a smart TV to do, because this app is not included with standard monitors, just a computer monitor. It's not going to have Apple AirPlay. You're going to have to have a smart TV. And even then, you have to be uh, careful which smart TV you get, not all of them have AirPlay as, a, as an app on that TV. But yeah, you can do it if you wish to. Uh, it's very simple to set up. You, know, you pull down the iPad, you pull down the top right, you pull it down with your finger, go to the focus uh, button and choose the monitor. It'll be named there, just choose the monitor and you'll do AirPlay. So questions. Jeff, I haven't I haven't noticed anything in the in the chat. Anything there we need to take take a look at? Uh, really, just one question is somebody is asking: Can you name the monitors something other than the the number the the uh, display number uh, in the back office for uh, purposes of organization? You can organ you can name them. Um, it doesn't appear on the point of sale or any place else, but it does appear there to help you organize them and understand what, what they are. Um, and of course, this makes a big difference for your remote uh, support to those customers. Uh, makes it real easy to, to understand where things are uh, very, very quickly, but you can do that. Um, and then somebody's asking, can you move the order off the iPad? Yeah, there's, there's a bump bar or a bump button right there on the iPad. So you can literally bump it from the iPad. I actually have one that uh, Jerry showed kind of a very basic cable that's there. Um, I actually have one that has a uh, electrical cord on it. it. It cost me about $36. I bought it on Amazon. And that one cord both charges and works as a display uh, cord. Works really good. Um, I've used it several times. Uh, it tends to be something I just have thrown in a, a box right at the moment, but it, it is something you can get. Uh, the other thing I'd recommend is if you're not really wanting to set up the, the cabling and stuff to do this is you can actually plug your, your iPad in using your regular charger, uh, use the um, uh, AirPlay, and you don't have to have any cables connected at all as long as your monitor that you're connected to does support AirPlay. And that's actually the way I run it in my house. It works fantastic. Um, I can display it on any one of my... my um, monitors or TVs, because they all support this feature. Uh, the other option that you may want to look at for charging is I actually also have a QR charger, uh, a quick charger. 
that you can stick to the back of my iPad. It continuously charges. Um, it's part of the mount that is mounted to my iPad. Um, that was a little more pricey because it is part of a, a mount. It was about $150. Um, but that way my iPad is mounted, charges, and I have my ports free on it. I can use that at any point. And, and I bought that again off of Amazon. Yeah, here's one Jerry's showing. It, it's a great example of one where you can plug in and charge. And in this case, it has an HDMI and a DP port on it. Um, and, and these type of things work really good. And they're usually not that expensive anymore. And this one, you know, he's showing is, is 20 bucks. Um, so they're out there, they're readily available depending on which method works best for you. Actually, Jerry, you left. I think that's the exact same brand as the one that's oh. sitting in my, my desk. Yeah. Um, I, I may have these. that exact one sitting there at my desk in Pleasanton. I use these every day on my MacBook. So that's, this is the one I have. Yeah. And I've been pretty happy with it. I think mine's probably about a year old and, you know, looks brand new. I haven't had any problems with it. Yeah. I plug in my charger here, the HDMI here, and I have a little, uh, little USB connector that allows me to use a uh, Bluetooth keyboard. Mine, I think, has... Uh, dp on mine so it fits more than newer monitors um and i've never used the dp port but it's there right. yeah um, it's kind of cool it, it doesn't take much time yeah. on, on amazon they're they're quite there's a lot yeah. of, a lot of choices i have a question in the chat does the ipad have screen protectors you can get screen protectors for them um i don't know how much they cost but yeah you can get a screen protector for them yeah, and there's actually a couple of different types. You can get the hardenedized um, tempered glass pieces mm -hmm. uh, that you put on there that actually stick on the iPad screens. Uh, I actually have one of those. I really like it. You don't even know it's there. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a little cutout for my buttons and for my cameras and stuff, and it just is really nice. Uh, you can get a disposable plastic one, um, depending on what they want. I've literally seen people that are wrapping these in saran wrap. Um, yeah. You know, and and yep, you can do that if you want to have a good time. Yep, I just got my new iPhone. I put I put that glass protector on it, and then I'm not even concerned about it now. Yeah, and I do think this the glass ones on there. You know, they they do say hey, they protect the glass from it. I I have um, unfortunately, I have a cat in my house that likes to knock things off of things. Um, and it, this has taken a few. Uh, a few hits and she has knocked it off once or twice. I haven't broke the, the glass yet or damaged my iPad. It still looks brand new. Um, and I do think that that uh, glass piece on the front probably did keep me from cracking my glass. So, you know, for, I paid $26 for mine and it came in a pack of two. I think it was well worth it. Scott's asking, can you raise the incoming volume on the alert and voice alert sound? I only know to do it on the manual buttons at the top of the iPad to yep. the sound there. Is that it, Jeff? That's it. Um, but Scott, if they want it even louder then, than that, uh, I happen to be sitting next to, I wish I would have had it turned on for you. I could actually blow your speakers out on your computer. I'll guarantee it. Uh, I've got a wonderful Bose speaker here. Uh, I know this is really high end. I probably paid a couple hundred bucks for the speaker. Um, but I can pretty much hear it in my neighbor's house. If I wanted to, yeah, you could um, get a Bluetooth speaker, couldn't you? Oh yeah, you can pair a Bluetooth speaker, and I've had a few people buy a cheap Bluetooth speaker, you know, ten bucks on Amazon, fifteen bucks, pair it to their thing, and you can make it as loud as you want in that kitchen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have a good time. Um, and the nice part about it, if you buy a decent, you know, even if you buy a fifteen or twenty dollar one, they can charge while they're they're playing music or playing song uh, stuff. Um, and I tell people, if you're going to do that, mount that thing up on a wall someplace away from your employees where they can't turn it on, turn it off, mess with it, because uh, they will. <laughs> right. All right. Any other questions before I show how to set this up? Uh, we have one on here. Uh, when using online orders, such as Deliverect or yeah, orders come in, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it you can adjust the volume and stuff, and of course those do go to the KDS just as well. So flow well, right through. Yep. Uh, this is the point of sale. 
top left hand portion of the screen is the three lines. You pull that down. And now I'm going to scan QR, scan app QR. That activates the camera. I'm going to bring over and scan. And then it says, please continue activation on the target application. That is on the other iPad. So now I'm switching over to that iPad. Uh, choose the device number. This is the screen you saw on the presentation. I'm going to choose in the 300s. I'm going to choose device 300, KDS, and then I'm going to choose KDS 1. Now that activates this on the iPad. It's going to download the database from the, from the uh, cloud. I'm set up as far as the, as the app goes. It's ready to accept orders once I do the next portion, which is programming the back office. So now let's go to the back office. That's been right on All right, we're going to go to settings and then device config. I'm on device six. Under peripherals, KDS integration, and then just turn it on. And once you do, then you start getting a whole bunch of other options. And you, these are options by display. So you'll have 20 that duplicate all these different. Uh, options here on the screen. You have your choice of this is a, uh, a just kind of a placeholder. It does not change the name on the KBS itself, but allows you in the back to know which KBS you're working on. Your um, suppress kitchen printer one. So I'm going to not send the kitchen printer one. Instead, I'm going to send it to the kitchen display. And then you have your choice of languages. You can have a specific language override just for this monitor. And then print alternate names. That These are the uh, print override. That's really it. Once you've turned it on, you can program each of these 20 different kitchen displays. That's all you have to do in the back office. For the item, it's already then defaulted to kitchen display one is already uh, defaulted. So you got kitchen printer one's already, the default is on and kitchen display one is already on. So as long as you're not programming multiple kitchen displays, it's going to work for every item in the, in the system. If you don't want an item, obviously going to a kitchen display, you're going to need to turn it off. But here's where you would program the other 19 of them, a total of 20 different kitchen displays. Now that's done there. One more step. This is back on the iPad. Go to the iPad, point of sale iPad. Go into hardware. Now at the bottom, you'll notice there is a new button called kitchen displays. That was not there until I activated the back office. Here I come in and it will search the network for any kitchen displays that we have in the system. It found kitchen display one, which is my other iPad. And now I'm gonna connect, it's done. I can do a test if I wish. And the test now pops up on this other iPad. Looks like that. We're now ready to accept orders. Once I hit the tender button to go to the tender screen, it instantly pops up on here. Now, while I'm taking cash, making change, or whatever, the kitchen's got a head start on the order. That's that return on investment or the cost justification aspect of the system. Scott, I turned that up for you. I'm going to turn it back down. It's awful loud. 
But as you ring up, you will then start to see additional orders. Okay, they're going to pop up on the screen. So now you've seen row one's been filled. I'm now working on row number two. I'm purposely going to run up nine orders. So now if I ring up one more order, then we're going to have nine when only eight are being displayed. You get the tone that it's there, but you don't get to see it because it's off screen. All I did was just gesture over and you see it there. Now I'm going to bump. You have the option on the system to bump an item or the entire order. To bump an item, you just simply uh, touch the item and you can bump it. And as I do bump them, they show up on the expediter monitor. So if I had a third iPad, I could be running that in an expo mode. And as I bump these orders or in the entire order, as I bump those, they show up and pop up on the expediter screen as something that you can uh, then put on the tray and send it out. And you'll also notice that when I bump that, that there's no more orders off screen. We've got all the orders on screen. I just bring up another one to show now that's off screen. Hey, Jerry, with the order you just ordered, can you yeah. void an item off it for us? Show us what that looks like. Sure. I mean, I've already tendered it. So let me okay. bring up one that I have not tendered. Now, there it is uh, order number uh, 30. 30. Okay. Now I'm going to, I have not paid for this order. So I'm going to go back and void an item. And it grays it out and lines it out. And uh, Doug was asking, you know, is that sound coming from your iPad or from your TV display? You're actually getting the, the sound from his iPad. Yeah, I turned it up for Scott earlier when we had that question. So, yeah, you are getting it now. And you also notice that I added an item. And on the bottom right hand side of that order panel, it's kind of a finger pointing up. And that's telling me I've got items below the screen. Giving me encouragement then to scroll up so I can see that. All right. Any other questions about that so far? Anything about this? I had a question, I think, was in about recalling it. Go to the top right, it says history, and that shows the history of the orders that I've bumped. I can unbump that. And when I do, it brings it back into the system, but it doesn't stop the timer. And you'll notice now I've got a red flashing uh, uh, section. That's because that now has exceeded the timer that's been set up. That is programmable in the system. You can set up what timer you would like it to be. Right. Kind of quiet. I don't want to do something else then. This being the programming section of, of the system, I can now come in and show different uh, layouts. You'll see at the bottom here, it's show alert when timer exceeds, and there's a the number of seconds. It's at 300 seconds. Display layout lets me choose how I would like this to be shown. I just changed it to four by one. You can then change it to whatever you'd like it to be. It's gonna take those same orders and reformat them.
I just have always liked the four by two. That your customer can have choices and have what they think is the best for their operation. Uh, and as you also saw, they can change it on the fly. So is there a different employee that comes in? You can also change it on the fly and it doesn't bump any orders. It doesn't lose anything when you do it. They're all there. And you can, since you can change it per station, each station can have their own layout. Right, their own layout, their own language, whichever they need for that particular employee. I do like the fact that you can change on the fly and you're not losing anything. Yeah, when you have a hardware-based unit, you can't do that. So when it's a software-based unit like this, you can do amazing things. Yeah, I didn't ring an order with modifiers. So let me go back and do that. Show up in so red. So there, Gary, you're seeing all those modifiers popped up there in red. Makes it pretty easy. And you guys see, this is pretty easy to read. It's a good size. You know, I think this is something that uh, people should really enjoy quite a bit more than a hardware based uh, or hardware bound unit. And it really doesn't cost more because the software is included with the Adele Pay. So it's a matter of just buying the iPad mini, if you wish, 300, 350 bucks, and then the monitor. Or with a hardware based unit, you're going to spend about the same amount of money. If you're getting the low end unit, the higher end units cost thousands of dollars per terminal, per device. It's outrageous what they charge for their product. So, there, there, while there are differences in products, this handles a, a restaurant really well. Nothing, nothing to be ashamed of here. If they were, uh, yeah, there we go. So none is blue, red is the alternate. One of the problems with yellow, um, Gary, is that some people can't, uh, if you're colorblind, you can't see red or you can't see yellow. Okay. So we tend not to use yellow very much in the software because okay. of that. You can change the font. Mm -hmm. This gets silly. That's pretty good size there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say even a guy like me can see it. You know, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have the top left. I have the settings button display that allows you to get into this. If you don't want that showing, we can take that display and, and turn it off. And what you then get, how you access the, this programming screen is three fingers. You take three fingers and touch the screen and it gets into it. That's the, the secret sauce that gets you to the programming aspect. Uh, fifth one down, there you go. Just stack versus flow. So you're gonna see them stacked one on top of each other where flow is gonna be a left to right, you know, until you fill it up. There's gonna go back and forth. You see Gary down here? That would be the style yeah. they're stacked to flow. Then yeah. uh, flow, they are uh, like line and then fill up a line and fill up a line. So I got it. It shortens the window. In, in kitchen displays, sometimes the restaurant wants to shorten the windows so that you don't have orders below the horizon. So you, that this would have then allow us to have a shorter uh, window of uh, total number of items. You could display more items in a shorter window. Okay.
All right, Jeff, what am I not showing? Uh, I think you've done a fantastic job here. Um, mm -hmm. We did get a couple of questions that comes in here, and, and okay. I think that might want to answer. Uh, the first one is, you know, how does tech support know that 301, uh, it, it, you know, is the one that's down? Well, my question here actually becomes one back to you guys. Um, if we have a traditional kitchen display system, you've got lots of failure points. You usually have the point of sale that might not send. You have the network between them. You have a control box. You have a bump bar. You have the monitor. Um, oftentimes, uh, if you're using a WPoS, there might be uh, a piece of software from the hardware control company that you need to interface to. So you have anywhere between five and seven failure points that have happened here. Um, in this system, you have two failure points. Okay, your network could be down, your iPad could be off. That's it. So when, when it is far more reliable than a hardware-based system. Uh, the other thing that's going to come up, somebody asks you, know, how do you tell them this, that, you know, which terminal is down? You'll notice in the upper corner there in Jerry's screen that he had just up, it tells you the terminal number right there. Um, it says KDS1 just above his order. So, I mean, the, the terminal number for each one of these is right there. But realistically, the only thing that's ever going to go wrong is your network might go down. So if your Wi-Fi is down, yep, you know, um, but how often does your Wi-Fi go down in a, in a restaurant? It's probably very, very rare. Um, you know, you did show, uh, Doug was asking, how do you recall an order? You did show that to them, um, how you can unbump an order. So no big deal. And he's also asking, you know, how do you change an order from dine-in to delivery or, or something like this? That would be something you'd actually do at the point of sale. You wouldn't change that at the kitchen display. The kitchen isn't going to be in contact with the customer to make that change. The person who made the order would actually recall that order, change the order type at the top of the, the order type, and, and boom, it would change it on the KDS because it's a, an integrated live feature. Um, so that you know answers that real easy. Um, then uh, Doug's also asking, you know, how does it tell the, the cook how to uh, how the items are ordered. I'm not exactly sure what you're looking there, but it, it, as you see, he's got a couple of different ways you can see how the display works. So what I did is I changed it to the uh, consolidated mode for the, the person who's just going to focus on how many patties to put down. But I've got everything going to kitchen one. And what you would do is you'd have kitchen uh, display one be for the fry cook. He would have only the fry orders going for that. And then kitchen display two would be the grill order and only the grill items going to that. And it wouldn't have um, the modifiers go with it. And what I'm showing on this screen is the icon to the right of the item actually shows the kitchen is, is this a dine-in or in this case, curbside. So this item down here, the medium iced Havana cappuccino, that is a curbside order. So the icon that goes with that is programmable. So the, the kitchen now knows what, how to, how to plate that, whether to go is a, is a, a dine-in situation. Mm -hmm. And then Scott was asking, you know, if we're using uh, a monitor out there, would we still be using an iPad to bump the orders? So absolutely, yeah. uh, you would need an iPad. You know, if I was using a monitor and I was upsizing it to a large monitor from this, I would just invest in the iPad mini. It's one of the cheapest ones you can buy and use that to bump your orders. Um, that's the easiest way to do that. Uh, but they can use any, any iPad as a, as a bump bar. Have a good time. Um, they just need to be able to hit the bump button there at the button. And so, and uh, Doug is asking, you know, does the full order go to the expediter? Yes, um, full order goes to the expediter. So, uh, and, and Nick, uh, is there a way to create labels for kitchen uh, KDS or printers describing functionality location? Um, so you can use this in conjunction with printers and uh, label printers as well. Um, you actually find you can tie your KDS uh, stations directly to specific printers. Uh, that's there in the back office of the, the KDS software and you're, you're able to do that. 
label printers would actually still be controlled by the point of sale. Um, so that would come out from there. Uh, the latest iOS that's out there right now, uh, I know me and Jerry are probably both looking real fast. Um, 15 something. 15.2.1 yeah. is the latest one out there. And that's for all iPad versions. Um, you know, so, yep. So I'm looking at, uh, you should be seeing my Amazon screen. And I went and looked and you can spend money if you wish. You can get a $500 one or you can get a $286 one. So there's different prices. You do not have to have new. You can get an other than new, a referred. I'm looking back through this. I don't think we missed any questions. I think we've got them all, Jerry. Okay. That being the case, guys, you need to sell this. Just putting it real bluntly, you need to sell kitchen video. And that means you're going to have to have two iPads. Sorry, but that's the fact of life. <laughs> so you're going to get your point of sale iPad. And, if, and to show this, you're going to have to have a second iPad. It doesn't have to be a, a new iPad. It can be a mini. And it also can double then if you're showing kitchen video, you can also show on the same iPad kitchen or the customer facing display and kiosk. So it's not gonna to go to waste. That's what Jeff and I do. We show on our, on our second iPad, that's where we show customer facing rear display. And that's where we show the, the uh, kiosk. So it's not gonna to go to waste. And it's not that much of, a, of, an, of a, an additional investment. All right, any parting shots on that, Jeff? No, I think you did a great job, sir. Okay. Guys, we appreciate you coming out. This uh, We really encourage you to get that second iPad and start showing this. You will show it. You will then sell it. And your customers are going to love you for it. That cost justification that I showed you earlier is real. That's not just something we just dreamed up. It is real. And these restaurant tours will understand it. So... We will see you guys again next Friday at 2 o'clock Eastern. Thank you.